Hi and welcome to the first in a possible series of critique videos um, of people's work. I've not decided whether I'm going to start doing these yet or not, but a uh, fellow from Newfoundland, Canada has emailed me um, a few times, twisted my arm and taught me into doing a critique of his work. Uh, so Stephen uh, from uh, Newfoundland, Canada, this is going to be a critique of your work. Um, Stephen is 18, um, he's a semi-professional photographer, uh, says he's been shooting for uh, a little over a year now and shoots family portraits, uh, weddings, children as well. He also enjoys landscape and macro photography. Uh, the images that I'm going to show in this critique are of um, are portraits um, of some people and some children as well. I think one was an engagement session by the looks of it. Um, so we'll have a look at these images now. I'll give my thoughts. Remember these are my thoughts on the images. Um, Photography is a very, very subjective thing, whether someone likes something, uh, another person may not. Um, but I will certainly give some feedback on these images um, in this critique. So we'll have a look at these images now. Okay, and welcome to the first critique video. Uh, thank you very much, Stephen, for sending these images over. Um, so we'll have a look at these images now. Um, I am viewing these through Lightroom. For the simple reason is the windows or built-in viewers were kind of doing funny things to the colors so i figured we'll go to lightroom at least we know them we're getting a fair representation um, of the images um because i've seen looking at the exif data that they were processing lightroom as well so okay before we get into critiquing this image um we'll get the gear side of it out of the way because i know the people who watch my channel are interested in all the gear end of the day it doesn't matter what camera you use what lenses you have learn it get to know it use it and uh, to the best of its ability. So we can see this was shot with uh, ISO 100 with a 50mm lens, it's actually the Canon 50mm f1.4 at f2.2, 250th of a second. Um, Stephen shoots with the Canon 50D which is a crop sensor body. But again, what camera, what lenses you have, doesn't matter, you can get out there and um, get the results and start earning money with your camera should you wish to. Okay, so we'll have a look at this image. Now, what we'll do is we'll get rid of all this rush around the side, just so we can see the image. And uh, I'm guessing this is a either part of a family shoot or a um, child shoot. We've got a young fella here, um, who's at the beach or possibly some kind of a coastline. It looks like it was shot towards the end of the day, where the sun's setting. And the giveaway here is the reflected colour of the sky top left corner you, know, you get some really deep oranges deep reds in the sky it's a really great time of day to shoot as well especially with natural light as it hits the horizon and um, often called the golden hour okay so looking at this first image um, he seems you know quite happy um, is engaged with the camera engaged with the photographer um, which is a good thing and it's a big part of doing it you can turn up with all the gear that you want and if you're no good dealing with people, talking to them, getting to know them, um, getting the best from them or getting the real them to come out and show through the pictures that you take then you're gonna have nothing. I don't care what gear you're using it's just not gonna happen. So he looks he looks like he's comfortable with you, smiling uh, I'm guessing he quite enjoyed the shoot and that's a big part of it so uh, well done on that front. Now looking at the image he's quite centered um, in the frame and uh, so You'll often hear people say that, you know, don't put people in the center of the frame. It's, you know, use the rule of thirds. Yes, okay, to a point, but you can break these kind of rules. However, in this one, he is a little bit probably too centered. There's a lot of dead space around him. Um, I noticed that you've tilted the, the camera, um, whether you maybe kind of were leaning over with him, um, just bending down. But there is a definite tilt there, and the giveaway is the horizon line which is top right of the frame. Now, you know, obviously this is the ocean out back here, so it would show you a clear horizon, and we have the sky up this end. Um, I will probably try and crop this image. One, it would improve the composition. Two, it's going to get rid of that distracting horizon line, um, because it really doesn't offer anything to the image. Um, the main background plate of the image, or the background for him, is the ocean and the water here. So we may as well just keep it as that, for me anyway. Um, also, what it may allow you to do is crop out, depending on how tight you want to crop, this rock, um, which is here. Um, I think it's a rock or maybe a stick, I don't know. Um, 
other than that you could possibly clone that out of the image also that's another option for you um, I think this probably would be stronger even a tighter framing around him or possibly compose around the rule of thirds and do away with the horizon line uh, it's good that you've taken an angle which has placed him cleanly on the sea as a background and you've not got any kind of horizon line cutting through whereas if you shot from a lower angle you can end up with this horizon line of the sea possibly cutting through his head or somewhere on his body um, so then you didn't want to go lower still to place it in the sky um, it's overall it's a it's a good image um, it's you know he's smiling nice and happy I'm sure his parents are happy uh, now one thing as well in how this was taken um, ISO 100 f2.2 really shallow depth of field 250th of a second on the shutter speed uh, that's well remembered isn't it I can't see those um, so the camera's gone to its max sync speed and you're using on camera flash to fill in some light on the subject which is fine that's great um, yeah, I can tell it's on camera on axis flash or it's very very close to look at the eyes that's really centered in the pupil okay it's a small catch light as well small light source the shadows are really hard under the chin here as we can see and they're placed in such a way which on camera flash would give um, because it's just on axis and quite fighting uh, it's a tool there to be used you will get far far better results taking the flash off camera with some kind of cord or uh, manual wireless triggers if you're using the flash ETTL so automatic flash that's fine um, you can run manual flash or TTL but getting the getting the flash off getting the camera off the flash yeah getting the flash off camera will get you far stronger results downside to that they can take a little bit more time to run and set up sometimes you would need an assistant to do that by the way mum and dad if they're there with him can make a great assistant so there may be the chance that you might miss a few shots so on camera flash does kind of have its place for the speed and flexibility of moving around okay so we'll go to the next image there we are, the next of the same little fella there he is sat on the rock and we can tell it's that kind of end of day if we look here really nice orange skies and um, the sun's not quite hit the horizon yet but it's getting there and that's really bright in the background and we've got again shot ISO 100 with a 50mm lens I'm guessing that lens is your favorite there Stephen the 51.4 it's a great focal length on crop for portraits f2.5 1 60th of a second okay so we'll have a look at this image further so he looks again quite happy sat on the rock I don't think he's not making eye contact to the camera at this case in this stage not necessarily a bad thing he's probably looking at a mum and dad over your shoulder I'm guessing um, the natural daylight here is causing some lens flare now <laughs> you'll get a load of people that will say oh lens flare that's bad you should always put your lens hood on to prevent that well guess what it's directly facing the camera pretty much so your lens hood's not really going to do much for you and lens flare of that kind is actually quite interesting personally I quite like it so that's not a bad thing at all the shallow depth of field has helped keep him in a clean spot his head in the clean spot so the rock isn't too prominent we can tell what it is so he's nicely separated from that again you've used some fill in flash which is on axis on camera flash I've covered that already but it's better than not doing because all the light is coming from here if we didn't fill fill it in with light here using flash of some sort then he's just going to go really dark or if you expose for this we're going to lose absolutely everything in the sky and on the water here so good choice on that one um, I like the composition of this one um, it works quite well for me he's uh, well placed in the frame we can tell where he is you know we can certainly tell he's on the coastline he's sat on a rock on the coast on the coastline we can see the water line here so uh, well done uh, with that one now if we have a quick closer look um, we can tell it's not absolutely in focus okay that's fine now all right it's nice to have images in focus but one thing i will say on that um, is that the moment takes precedence over critical sharp images or really noise free images or you know oh i'm not going to use the high iso because we get noise or oh, the moment's gone so or it's blurry so you can't see anything 
So don't worry too much about that on that one. But I think with him being kind of sat down and still posed, I would have probably liked to see it a little bit sharper. Uh, but no problem at all. So we'll have a look at the next one. Uh, one thing, just a comment as well. So far on these images, um, the call looks good. Uh, I'm guessing you like contrast in your images, um, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I went through a stage in my photography where I used to pump a lot of contrast into my images and I've now kind of backed that off a little bit. But you'll find as you go along, if you've only been shooting for a year, Stephen, then your taste and your style is going to change. Yeah, you will shoot stuff for your clients because they want, they want a certain look. They might bring something to you which is really punchy, really poppy colours, and really contrasty. And yeah, okay, you've got to deliver that to your clients. Um, but that might not necessarily be your style per se. Um, but over the over the years, you will end up developing a style. And I say years because it does take years to do. So let's have a look at the next one. And we have a little baby. Oh, okay, so... Uh, oops. So here we are. I think this was taken with um, ambient light, possibly with a little fill flash, but more so in ambient light. If we look here, ISO 800, it's indoors, I'm guessing. Um, so usually indoors, light levels are relatively low. 50mm lens at f2.2. Great, these fast lenses can let a lot of light in at 1 60th of a second. And, uh, and we'll take a bit of a closer look at this now. Now, the processing of the image, um, it's not, it's a little diff, kind of, ooh, hang on, we'll go back to that one. Yeah, that's my fault, press the button. We'll go back to it. Um, my, it's not my taste in black and white processing, but again, um, that's all very, very subjective. Um, it's a great tight frame shot. I think it would look great up on a canvas, on a wall. So the frame's really filled, nice shallow depth of field. You've got a nice expression on the baby here. And you can see the shallow depth of field with the, the shape of the bokeh in the background, which I actually quite like on that one there. Uh, that's uh, quite nice. Now, I can tell looking at this image that we've got more sharp focus around the nose and the mouth than we have eyes. At uh, the moment, take precedence over all of the composition sometimes. Um, it is nice to see the eyes nice and sharp because that's immediately what the eyes go to in an image. Um, focus on the eye which is closest to camera. In this instance you could get away with focusing on either of them. Um, but shooting such a shallow depth of field, if you have focused on the eyes and then recompose, it's amazing how quickly the focus can fall off. Although shooting little babies and little children, it could well be that they have moved slightly after you focus before you press the shutter all the way down. But a very, very good image. I'm sure the parents love that one. Um, like I say, nice tight frame, I love this kind of shot, uh, well composed, uh, so a good job on that one. So we'll just go back to Lightroom, and we'll have a look here, <laughs> oh dear, someone's upset. Okay, again this is shot uh, I think in a lower light kind of a situation, ISO 800 with the 50mm lens, and I can see a pattern here. Loves this lens at f1.8 one fiftieth of a second. So we'll have a look at this now. Again, nice tight shot. Um, I quite like this actually. I know in the previous one I said that the eyes should be in focus, but I think within this situation, it looks like the child's kind of reacting, maybe tilted the head back slightly, or just about to start wailing or crying. Something's upset her. Um, not quite sure what. Um, but it certainly captured that. We can see the tears falling down here. I quite like the processing on this nice shallow depth of field. You've left, it's quite nice tight framing, but you've left enough space not to clip the ear off too much and to show the rest of this headband or hat as well. Okay, it's out of focus, but it's still within the frame, so we can still see that because um, it's part of her outfit, her parents' outfit that she, they chose for maybe for the day. So uh, a good job on that one. I kind of want to know from this um, what had happened. I mean, what was taken away from her or what was said. Uh, it's quite interesting. And that's a good thing because it's made me stop, look and think of, oh, I wonder what's going on here. So good job on that one. Uh, I think the next one is from an engagement set. And again, we'll have to have a quick look at the settings. Um, but one thing to note, uh, people who are watching this uh, in reference to the settings, don't worry too much about them, I'm just covering these, just parts of it, because 
your settings are different for any situation you can't take settings from one person's picture and apply it to one of yours it just doesn't work so we've got ISO 100 50 millimeter again um, f2.2 and 320th of a second okay great stuff uh, well, let's have a look at this and you'll like your contrasty black and whites which is fine by me I, I like contrasts and black and whites are great uh, you can see your watermark in the corner now what you're going to find is some people hate watermarks some people don't mind them personally I'm not too fussed although I can understand why people do want to walk on watermark their images these days uh, although saying that something like that can be easily removed but there we go so we've got a couple um, in the in the moment of kissing it's a really tight shot in the moment I quite like the processing on this one uh, we've not we might have lost some detail in skin here on forward this is where the highlights go to really bright white um, it's might not be completely lost but it's getting quite close a little bit hot probably in there that's probably the case of the the light the natural light in the situation is hitting her more so here than in the shadow area here because she's probably been shaded by a, either the environment that she's in or her husband to be kissing her um, I really like this shot actually nice tight shot I would kind of wish that the jacket collar wasn't here difficult to kind of control when shooting a situation like that if this situation just happens in front of you and you need to capture it you can't say whoa, whoa, whoa wait a minute I need to kind of move your jacket collar because that the moment's kind of gone um, but, uh, her eyes looking at the camera kind of like they do look a little bit kind of strained over too far so it can look a little uncomfortable if they're really trying to look over to the the left or to maybe to the right depending on which way you're looking because um, the back eye here it kind of goes a little bit weird not being able to see the pupil or anything I know it's out of focus but because she's really straining to look towards the camera kind of goes a little bit weird here and you've caught a great moment there again you're shooting a nice shallow depth of field I think you really love to do that and it does look great in portraits as well um, I've, obviously I've not seen the rest of your work in terms of anything else that you've shot but you do have other options shallow depth of field is awesome well you know creatively you've got the choice of shooting with more depth of field if you want to show more of an environment where they are okay, but uh, well done with that one um, just one thing looking round on this and um, there's nothing too distracting other than the collar of the coat here again it's kind of a difficult thing to deal with um, the eye white or the whites of the eye I'm not too sure whether they were that kind of white naturally I'm getting the feeling that they've been worked on to remove a little bit of red eye um, or brighten the nose up um, it looks a little bit too heavy on the brush processing on that I did used to do work on the eyes myself I very very rarely do now because I find it very very difficult to get it to where it looks subtle enough so it looks real um, so that's just uh, my thoughts on that uh, bit of processing on the eyes there but nice and sharp focused on the eye there good job so we'll go to the next image and then uh, okay here we are I think this is the same couple same engagement session and ISO 100 50mm f2.2 and I think you like that aperture uh, 1 500th of a second okay we're shooting this in natural light um, tons of contrast in this image so what we'll do we'll just bring that up to a full screen now um, one thing with this okay shooting wide open is awesome like I say sometimes you do need that little bit extra depth of field okay quite blurry on her face here if you've locked focus on him the distance between her here and him is quite great at f2.2 you've got a really shallow depth of field uh, that said if you do start to stop down you're going to get more of the background in focus a bit of a compromise on that now talking about the background okay you've dropped down to their eye level or at least his eye level which is great shooting from above would not have worked um, you can't lying on the floor may have been a little bit too weird on this one so a good shooting position there problem with the background is you've got this white fence which is running through the frame here okay I know it's not sharp but we can still tell it's a white fence and it's cutting through his body and through his head 
this is a pole shot so we have control over this situation here we could have possibly moved or turned and shot in another direction I don't know the environment I don't know whether it would have looked like crap turning around and pointing the other way and shooting that way I'm not sure but that's a little bit distracting really I want to try and avoid thing cutting through someone's person and certainly someone's head and that's too strong too distracting for me on that I think on this image is a little bit too much contrast for it okay we're starting to lose a little bit of detail in particular on her face I think she's a little bit fairer skinned so just watch out for that one and this jacket here the color has started to go a little bit as a result that said if you really like the punchy contrasty stuff if that's becoming your not so much your style but the way that you shoot and process your images that's absolutely fine and like I say that may change just be aware of when you're increasing things like contrast saturation uh, the effect it has overall on the image in particular say with skin tones as well now let's have a quick zoom in on this here let's wait for Lightroom to load sorry for the slow P I'm working on there we go okay not necessarily critically sharp and there is a little bit of um, I don't know whether it's kind of focus the plane of focus is somewhere else on him so again remember you want the eyes to be nice and sharp if you're shooting wide open nice shallow depth of field focus and recompose you've got to be really careful when you're doing so so always move your AF point up to the nearest one to the eye or the person that you want to focus on or the subject you want to focus on and we're, you know, impress far but just watch out for things coming through a person's head okay I think this is a little bit too aggressive on the processing and the contrast personally uh, very subjective that's just my thoughts so we'll have a look at the next one uh, compositionally I do like it it's a nice framing um, on that one I just kind of wish that this fence wasn't there um, although I don't suppose the, uh, the owner would like you going knocking that down so don't do that so we'll go to the next one and here we are same couple again okay now one thing I will say which is good within these this next series of images from the one we've just looked at through to the next ones you've kept the look consistent in terms of the processing so there's tons of contrast in it the saturation has been boosted so you've got a consistent look so if you were delivering a ton of different kind of looks to your client where the colors muted and the colors all punched up and you've got no contrast tons of contrast it gets a little bit weird so you've got a consistency working through there which is good in this image we've got ISO 100 50 mil f 2.8 at one five hundredth of a second so we're shooting this natural light and we'll have a closer look at this okay I like the composition on this using the rule of thirds nicely framed okay on a third here with some portrait orientation where the camera's turned um, on its axis okay we've got a nice framing here within the bottom third of the feet and the legs uh, this shows the environment that they're in okay I've said before head in the clean spot but this we can let go we've got a shallow enough depth of field and enough separation this doesn't kind of bug me too much through the heads it's created a sense of space or place where they are at some kind of shipping port uh, which is good which may well be relevant to those clients maybe they own a boat I don't know they've worked for a company there I'm not sure uh, one thing I do really like is this yellow beam here is I think there's a leading line which will lead you to the couple so you can see what's going on here capturing this tender moment between the two of them and we can also see a sense of space or place where that they are uh, so a very good job on that one now uh, really strongly composed I quite like that one so we'll have a look at the next one here we go again that's a nice one and um, we've got ISO 100 female f 2.8 thousand of a second we're shooting this uh, natural light I uh, don't think we've put any kind of flash in that look like it uh, although you could well do using the ETTL and high speed sync uh, let's have a look here okay now we've noticed we've got the background here which is completely blown to white that's fine it's going to happen if you want to expose for these two here which are the most important parts of the subject that's going to go doesn't bug me at all some people will hate the fact that highlights are blown and on maybe on the side of his face you know what that's fine you can sometimes you just got to let those highlights go and um, as long as it's not at the really important parts the skin tones and the face here then that's fine 
Um, I would say compositionally on this one I would have kind of liked you to come down a little bit just to fill a bit more of a tighter frame so you've got less of the stuff here because your eye will automatically sometimes go to the brightest part of the image now for me I'm looking at the couple I know what this image is about there is probably a little bit too much space up here and because it's blown out in the background remember this is in kind of full sun here the building's been hit by full sun nothing you can really do about that um, it would have liked to maybe compose that a little bit tighter to minimize that fact so then it's less likely for the view eye to be distracted and go into this section here um, don't worry too much about this bit bling out on the back of the jacket the side of his face that's perfectly fine but if you would kind of drop down a little bit moved a little bit to the right so you've got more of a tighter frame around them both okay that would have been good for me um, at the bottom of the frame here um, it's a very close moment, you know, the, the hugging, they seem really happy. Again, I said this in the first image that we looked at, it looks like your clients are engaging with you, they're comfortable with you there with the camera, which is a big part of it. Um, you can see his hands here are kind of wrapped around her. Um, I possibly would have liked that to be a little bit lower so we're not cutting the digits of the fingers here um, on that one. But you've kept consistency, like I say here, it's the same punchy, contrasty look. Um, so that's good, so you're not chopping and changing, so you're kind of consistent with the way that you're shooting or processing um, the images, which is great. But I would just, again, drop down a little bit more of a tighter frame on that one there. We'll have a look at this last one, and this is the last one in the series. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's obviously in the, a day where you've got a ton of light, so your ISO is kept fairly low on these ones, no, really low, the base ISO. 50 millimeter f1.8 1 500th of a second on this one so we'll have a look okay so they're both kissing here in the background um, the the windows of the building and this blown out space here can just be a little bit distracting on this one I mean highlights will go you've got no choice unless you light them independently from the ambient light which is hitting the building um, but this probably Again, a little bit distracting seeing these windows up here. Now, I know what you've gone for here, and this is interesting because a lot of people will think, oh, focus on the person, focus on the eye and every time, focus on the eye. But you've gone for something a little bit different here, and you've focused on the hands where they're holding hands together. So that's good. And if you selective um, depth of field or selective focus to show that, so that's the most important thing in terms of where the image is sharp, and then the rest of it has gone out of focus. Um, although, maybe a little too shallow a depth of field you could have done with a little bit more um, but we can still recognize that it's the same couple and again same kind of punchy contrasty look um, not sure whether that bugs me sometimes if you're cutting digits off on hands it does kind of bug me but if we look at this we can actually kind of use his arm as a kind of a leading line to lead you into the image which is good it's a nice tight frame we can tell that this is within the getting onto the low third which is the most important part of the image of what you were focused on or certainly looking to focus on uh, so well done on that one with a little bit hot on the exposure on the hand we're starting to lose skin detail in there so just watch out for those blown highlights um, but very very impressed um, so far I'm sure your clients are really happy again Photography is a very, very subjective thing. Some people may look at these, look at the process, and go, "I ah, know I don't like that one." Or, "Why do you do? Why didn't you do some more black and whites?" Or, oh, "I love, I like color. I like black and white. I like this. I like that." It's all subjective. Um, keep shooting. Um, keep practicing. Keep developing your style of shooting. Um, keep working with your clients. I'm sure a good thing to do is to ask for feedback of your clients, and of course, feedback from other photographers. Kind of ironic. This here we are doing the critique. Um, but feedback from people does certainly help and I'm not talking about the feedback that you get on Flickr which is nice nice depth, nice depth of field ooh wow nice image you know you want a little bit more than that um, so but uh, so go out there and seek some critique on your work which you have done by asking me to look at them but go um, further afield and, and ask others um, to critique your work as well a good thing that you can do uh, with critiques is to find a local photographer to you um, whose work you like, who you respect, or maybe who you look up to and go and ask them if you can sit with them and they can look through your work. But don't take a laptop or a tablet or an iPad. Do something different. Take a print folder. Now take some prints in.
for them to look at. Okay, so very well done, Stephen. I hope you continue to shoot. Um, I know that you said you enjoy doing macro and landscapes as well. I know all this has been portraiture based, so from that, I'm kind of thinking that the macro landscape stuff's kind of your personal thing that you like to do away from doing the client stuff and portraiture, which I'm sure you enjoy doing, so that's fine. Um, but just make sure that if you're marketing yourself to clients that this is kind of what they mainly see and they don't come to a website which shows um, client, child, child, family portrait, nice, nice client, you know, family portraits, child, landscape, macro. Whoa, where did that come from? So just make sure you're consistent in, you know, with who you're trying to target for your paid work. Um, if need be, you can set up a separate site for your landscape work if that's what you want to do. But very impressed with these. Good work. I hope um, you take on board some of the things I say. Like I said, that's my opinions. I'm not trying to say that that's, that's possible. I am right. You must do it this way. Okay, but um, I would love to hear people's feedback on this first critique video. Stick them in the comments below. Um, or email me should you wish to. Stephen, I'd love to hear from you as well, um, in, either in the comments or via email after you've watched this. So thank you very much for talking me into doing this, and thank you very much for sending the files over. Okay, and that, that has been the first critique video. Oh, and also, I probably should have said this at the start, thank you very much for giving me permission to use your images for this video as well. I might as well say it now, <laughs> so uh, thank you very much for that. Okay, that's been the first critique video. Thank you very much for watching guys and I will catch you guys soon.